Beneath Naples, the ground is rising by over two centimeters every month. Each day brings another barrage of earthquakes, dozens shaking the city without pause, shattering records, and warping the land so quickly that ferry docks no longer meet the shore. But this nonstop turmoil is not just making headlines, it is stressing the volcano's protective cap rock, bringing it closer to the breaking point. What happens when a city is trapped between relentless unrest and a system too fragile to contain it? Every hour, the ground beneath Campi Flegrei trembles. Seismic sensors register quake after quake with no sign of a pause. In the past year alone, the region has been rocked by over 54,000 earthquakes, more than four times the number detected just a few years ago. The swarm is relentless, magnitude two and above, sometimes several in a single afternoon, sometimes dozens in a day. The epicenter is almost always the same, Pozzuoli and the steaming Solfatara crater, just three kilometers below the surface. These are not distant rumbles. Residents describe their homes shaking, windows rattling, and a constant sense of unease that never fades. Some quakes are strong enough to jolt people awake at night. Others come as rapid fire bursts that make the ground feel alive. Local authorities track each event in real time, but the numbers keep climbing. In February 2025, more than 690 earthquakes struck in just five days. Even the most experienced volcanologists admit they have never seen so many persistent, shallow quakes packed into such a short span. The seismic barrage is now a daily backdrop for life in this ancient volcanic basin. The land in Pozzuoli is not just shaking, it is rising. Since 2005, the ground here has lifted by nearly 1.6 meters, a pace that now averages 2.5 centimeters every month. For people living and working along the waterfront, this means daily routines are anything but stable. Antonio Scotto, a veteran ferrymaster, has watched his dock transform. The metal ramps that once sloped gently from ship to shore now dangle awkwardly above the water. Sometimes too high for cars or foot passengers to cross safely. Twice the Port Authority has rebuilt the docks, raising platforms and adding makeshift steps, but the ground keeps climbing. Each morning, Antonio checks the ramp's height against the tide, radioing updates to anxious crew and passengers. Some days, the mismatch is so severe that boarding schedules grind to a halt. He has lost count of the times officials have come by to measure, reassure, or warn about possible emergency closures. For residents, the sight of construction crews adjusting concrete and steel is as familiar as the sulfurous steam drifting from Solfatara. What is happening beneath their feet is not a distant geological process. It is a force that bends roads, cracks sidewalks, and disrupts the simple act of getting to work. In Pozzuoli, the ground's relentless rise is a daily reminder that the volcano below is anything but asleep. As the ground in Campi Flegre rises, the real danger lies beneath the surface. Every centimeter of uplift forces intense pressure onto the cap rock, the dense, protective layer that seals volatile gases and fluids below. This cap rock is not uniform concrete. It is a patchwork of ancient volcanic ash, hardened by heat and laced with mineral fibers. Over decades, hydrothermal fluids have altered its chemistry, sometimes strengthening it through natural cementation, but just as often weakening it, especially near faults and old fractures. When the land lifts, the cap rock bends and stretches. Laboratory tests on core samples from this region show that the rock can withstand only so much before it starts to crack. The critical point comes when the pressure from below, driven by hot carbon dioxide rich fluids, overcomes the tensile strength of the rock. At Campi Flegre, that threshold is dangerously close. Seismic tomography reveals zones where the cap rock's stiffness has dropped, especially beneath Solfatara, matching areas of frequent quake activity. Each new fracture is a pathway, allowing fluids to surge upward and triggering even more earthquakes. 
The result is a mechanical chain reaction. Uplift drives fractures, fractures drive quakes, and each quake further weakens the seal. With only a third of its original strength left after the 1980s magma intrusion, the caprock is now under relentless strain, inching closer to failure with every passing month. At the heart of the crisis sits Pazuoli, a city perched on the caldera's restless skin. Nearly every earthquake in this ongoing swarm traces back to a narrow zone beneath the town and the steaming Solfaterra crater. Seismic records pinpoint the majority of epicenters at depths of just three kilometers, remarkably shallow for volcanic unrest. This means the energy is released almost directly beneath homes, schools, and businesses. The concentration of seismicity in such a confined area is not random. It reflects the underlying geology, a patchwork of faults and fractures that slice through the weakened Cape Rock, creating direct pathways for pressurized fluids and gas to surge upward. Each new burst of shaking further stresses these subsurface weaknesses, and the shallow focus ensures that even moderate quakes feel intense at the surface. Pazuoli's dense population sits almost exactly atop this volatile intersection, making it the most exposed community in the entire caldera. For scientists, the clustering of seismic energy here is a stark warning. Any escalation, whether in quake strength or vent activity, will strike at the very core of a thriving urban area. Sulfur-laced steam rises from the ground at Picciarelli, where the Earth's breath grows hotter by the month. Recent readings show fumarole temperatures holding steady at 97 degrees Celsius, just three degrees shy of boiling. Scientists now track not only the heat, but the sheer volume of gas escaping from vents and cracks. Carbon dioxide emissions measured by automated flux stations have climbed far above long-term averages, with spikes that often coincide with days of intense seismicity. These are not gentle puffs, they are pressurized jets, sometimes strong enough to scorch nearby asphalt or to wilt vegetation within hours. The chemistry of the gas tells a deeper story. Rising carbon dioxide, mixed with traces of hydrogen sulfide and methane, signals that fluids from deep underground are being squeezed toward the surface. Every surge in gas flow is a sign that pressure is building beneath the cap rock, searching for an escape. At Picciarelli, the hiss of escaping steam is more than background noise. It is a warning that the system below is charged and restless, with each new measurement adding to a growing sense of urgency among researchers. Every day, Pozzuoli's residents brace for the next jolt. The ground shakes, sometimes violently, sometimes just enough to rattle dishes or set off a chorus of barking dogs. But it's not just the tremors. Loud booms echo through the city, sharp cracks that send people running to check their walls for new fissures. For parents, it means waking anxious children in the middle of the night. For shopkeepers, it is sweeping up fallen goods and checking shelves for damage. The constant uncertainty has worn down nerves and trust. In response, local authorities launched a new digital reporting platform. Now anyone can log strange smells, fresh cracks, or sudden noises straight from their phone. Within weeks, the app filled with thousands of reports, each one a data point in a growing map of anxiety and vigilance. Community leaders like Lucia Ferraro, a retired teacher, have become unofficial liaisons, helping neighbors document their experiences and press officials for answers. The reporting system has turned daily fear into a kind of grassroots monitoring, giving residents a sense of agency even as the ground beneath them refuses to settle. Inside the Civil Protection Headquarters, the official alert board still glows yellow. Not green, not orange, just yellow. The same status that has been in place for over a year, despite five magnitude four plus earthquakes in 2025 alone. Each time the ground convulses, scientists and emergency officials gather reviewing sensor feeds and risk models late into the night. The protocol is clear. An orange alert would mean pre-evacuation drills, school closures, 
and the first steps toward moving thousands out of harm's way. But the threshold keeps shifting. Instead of escalation, authorities have quietly introduced an unofficial dark yellow, a heightened state of caution that stops short of triggering the legal obligations of orange. In press conferences, the Civil Protection Chief insists that all decisions are based on the best available science, but leaked meeting notes tell a different story, as officials debate not just seismic data, but the economic fallout and logistical chaos that would follow a higher alert. For residents, this limbo feels less like protection and more like a gamble, one where the rules are being rewritten as the crisis unfolds. The integrity of Campy Flegre's cap rock is no longer theoretical. It is a measured, physical limit. Decades of monitoring and laboratory tests show that what was once a tough, fiber-reinforced barrier has lost most of its strength. The 1980s brought a deep intrusion of magma, warping the ground and pushing the system to its edge. Since then, repeated cycles of heating, pressurization, and chemical attack from rising fluids have left the cap rock with just a third of its original resilience. Core samples drilled from beneath Solfaterra reveal a patchwork, some zones still stiff and dense, others riddled with microfractures and altered by acidic gases. Seismic tomography confirms these weak spots, mapping out elastic discontinuities where the rock is now more sponge than shield. Each new earthquake each surge of carbon dioxide-rich fluid pushes the system closer to rupture. The cap rock is not an unbreakable lid. It is a cracked and straining seal, holding back a volatile mix of steam and gas. If pressure keeps building, the next breach may not wait for a warning. A sudden breach in the cap rock at Campy Flagre would not unfold as a slow-motion disaster. Scientists warn that the warning signs for a phreatic eruption, a violent steam-driven blast could appear only minutes before an explosion. The sensors might catch a burst of high-frequency earthquakes or a sharp spike in gas emissions, but the interval between first anomaly and eruption could be measured in half an hour or less. This is not theory. It is history repeating itself. In 1538, the Monte Nuovo eruption began after weeks of trembling and uplift, but the final escalation happened at breakneck speed. Eyewitness accounts describe the ground cracking open and steam venting furiously, followed by an eruption that shifted from steam to magma in a matter of hours. The parallels are striking, rapid uplift, relentless quakes, and a population caught off guard by the pace of events. Today, with the cap rock weakened and new faults forming, the pathway from silent pressure to surface explosion could be even shorter. The risk is not just academic. It is a real-world threat where the difference between safety and catastrophe could come down to a handful of minutes. 500,000 people live inside the Campy Flegre danger zone. In Pozzuoli alone, 80,000 would need to leave their homes at the first sign of a true emergency. Official evacuation plans exist on paper, but every drill has exposed the limits of what is possible. Narrow roads snake through old neighborhoods and quickly clog with cars, even on an ordinary morning. Traffic simulations predict that a full-scale evacuation could jam every exit route within hours, leaving thousands trapped in bottlenecks. Hospitals in the red zone have only a fraction of the surge capacity needed for mass casualties or panic-driven injuries. Buses and ambulances are in short supply, and drivers worry about navigating roads that could be cracked or blocked by debris. Emergency managers admit that their 72-hour timetable is optimistic, especially if a warning comes late at night or during a sudden spike in seismicity. Communication is another weak link. Cell networks have crashed during past drills, and not every resident has access to real-time alerts. For families with elderly relatives or those who rely on medical equipment, the thought of moving on short notice is overwhelming. The sheer scale of the population at risk makes Campy Flegre's evacuation challenge unlike any other volcanic crisis in the world. Every minute shaved off the warning window means more lives at risk.
and more pressure on a system already stretched to its breaking point. On the edge of the Solfatara crater, heavy machinery carves out the foundation for a luxury hotel. The project's permit was approved in 2025, even as scientists warned that the site sits squarely inside the highest hazard zone. Local records show that developer Finn Campy secured the green light after a series of closed-door meetings with municipal officials. The justification is simple. Tourism is the lifeblood of the region. And a new hotel promises jobs, tax revenue, and international attention. But beneath the surface, the science tells a different story. The ground here is unstable, fractured by new faults, and weakened by relentless uplift. Official risk maps classify this area as a red zone, where construction is supposed to be tightly restricted. Yet loopholes and political connections have kept the bulldozers moving. For residents who watch cracks spread across their own walls, the message feels clear. Economic interests take priority even when the threat is measured in meters of uplift and thousands of daily earthquakes. Scientists who call for stricter controls or temporary moratoriums find their warnings sidelined, their risk assessments buried in technical appendices. City councils debate the cost of lost business, not the price of potential disaster. The tension is everywhere between the urgent need for safety and the relentless push for development. In Pozzuoli, the question is not just how to evacuate, but why new hotels rise as the ground itself grows more dangerous. The numbers now pouring in from Campi Flegre's monitoring network leave little room for debate. In just three years, the annual earthquake tally has skyrocketed from 12,000 to over 54,000 a surge driven not by more shaking, but by better detection. Artificial intelligence, trained on years of seismic noise, now picks out even the faintest tremors, revealing hundreds of microquakes each day that older systems missed. During the five-day swarm in February 2025, automated logs counted 692 distinct earthquakes, including the record-breaking magnitude 4.6 event. For scientists at INGV, the challenge is no longer just tracking the chaos, but making sense of it fast enough to protect lives. Dr. Marco D'Angelo, a volcanologist at INGV, describes the current setup as a patchwork, good, but not good enough. The existing sensor grid, spaced kilometers apart, struggles to pinpoint the smallest ruptures or the earliest signs of caprock failure. D'Angelo argues for a dense array of next-generation sensors, hundreds of seismic, gas, and thermal stations packed into the most active sectors, each feeding data to real-time AI classifiers. With this approach, sudden bursts of micro seismicity or sharp spikes in gas emissions could trigger instant alerts, buying precious minutes for emergency response. He says the technology exists, and what is missing is the will to deploy it at the scale this crisis demands. For Campi Flegre, the solution is clear. Smarter, denser, faster monitoring before the next number is one we cannot ignore. Today, more than half a million people live atop Europe's most volatile caldera, while the caprock protecting them is weaker than ever. As seismic unrest accelerates and evacuation debates stall, Every hour of uncertainty carries new risk. The next eruption may not wait for consensus. Living here, the real question isn't if nature will act, but how prepared we choose to be. Share your thoughts below.